One of the largest RV manufacturers in North America went into receivership earlier this month. What does it all mean for current and would-be owners? We're going to cover all that and more starting right now. Hi everyone, Neil Balthaser here and welcome to Ultra Mobility, the channel where you vote for the RVs that you want me to review. This week, we're not reviewing an RV, rather a situation that one of the largest RV manufacturers here in North America finds itself in, and that is insolvency. If you haven't yet heard, Erwinheimer Group of North America shuttered its plants, laid off all of its employees, and filed for receivership in Ontario, Canada on February 15th, 2019, just a few days ago. Let's give a little background on Erwinheimer and how we got to where we are and then talk about what it all means to current and would-be owners. It all started off like a fairy tale. Erwinheimer Group out of Germany is a highly respected and one of the largest RV manufacturers in Europe. In 2016, they wanted to expand into the very lucrative North American market and the fastest way to do that was to buy up one of the best known brands here in North America, Road Trek, which they did, and in doing so, created a new North American company called Erwinheimer Group North America. Erwinheimer Group North America managed the Road Trek brand along with three new brands, Heimer, Corrado RV, and Sunlight, to pretty quickly become very nearly, if not entirely, the number one Class B manufacturer here in North America, rivaling Winnebago Industries to command over 30% market share. The combined lineup of Class B camper vans encompassed 17 different models. All was going hunky-dory until Erwinheimer announced in the fall of 2018 that they would be selling themselves to Thor Industries to create the world's largest RV manufacturer. And it didn't take long for auditors to find, quote, financial irregularities within the North American operating unit. And in order to protect the Thor acquisition and not taint it with any potential scandal, the parent company quickly decided to shut down the entire North American operations. And that's what they did on February 15th, 2019. They shut everything down and put the company into receivership, which here in the States is bankruptcy. If you're interested in the public details about the current status of the receivership, I'll put a link to the company who's handling it, and you can read, like I have, all the interesting tidbits contained in official court documents. There is something interesting buried in those documents. It appears that Erwinheimer was in the process of trying to find a buyer for their North American unit prior to the surfacing of the news of financial irregularities. This means that significant work was already in place and prospective buyers were already approached. The current company that owns all the assets, including factory leases, inventory, and the Road Trek brand, is on an accelerated six-week timeline to try and conclude the sale of some or all of the assets. This could mean that a buyer is secured that will continue the manufacture of at least the Road Trek products. We'll know more in six weeks. If a buyer cannot be found in six weeks, then it is likely that the company will be liquidated. The Road Trek brand name is a somewhat valuable asset and could be acquired by someone, but that would be in name only. Current owners would not get their warranties transferred over to whomever may acquire the Road Trek brand. Interestingly, the Corrado and Heimer brands were being leased to the North American unit and are now owned by Thor, and their licenses with Erwinheimer Group of North America have been terminated. That means it is highly unlikely that we're ever going to see a continuation of the Active, Axion, and Banff products at least coming out of any possible buyer. My opinion is that liquidation is the most likely scenario. So what does all this mean to current or prospective owners? Warranty and repair is the biggest headache and concern. 
I'm hearing that the company is not honoring warranty repair for its products, and that's not surprising since the company has liabilities totaling over $300 million. So, if you currently own or are planning on taking advantage of some great deals on discounted Heimer products, you'll need to consider an extended warranty. Now, it's more than I can cover in this video, but extended warranties like home warranties vary a lot and will require you to read the fine print to ensure that you're getting what you think you're getting. Here's some language from two different extended warranties. In one, you can see that it covers plumbing fixtures and valves, but is conveniently missing pipes and water lines, an important exclusion. In this extended warranty, it covers water lines, but has conveniently listed furniture as a broad term of something that is not covered. By furniture, do they mean cabinets as well as sofas and ottomans? You would need to find out. Extended warranties can range in price anywhere from $2,000 up to $7,000, depending on their terms and what exactly they cover and don't cover. So, caveat emptor. All right, let's assume you've purchased a good extended warranty. Now, it's time to break down the RV into the parts and pieces that are likely to be covered by your extended warranty, things which are covered by their own warranties, and finally, things which may be covered by your extended warranty but may not be able to be easily repaired or replaced. Let's start with things that are covered by their own warranties. The biggest one is your chassis, whether Mercedes, Ram, or Chevy, all come with their own warranties, and with the exception of Mercedes-based models, owners should feel pretty confident that their engines and van bodies are covered. Mercedes owners, I'll speak to your situation in a moment. Most of the appliances and some components are also going to be covered by their own warranties. Those are things like your refrigerator, stove, microwave, generator, water heater, heater, rooftop air conditioner, water pump, awning, toilet, TV antenna, smoke and CO detectors, TV and DVD slash Blu-ray players, blinds, rooftop fans, and electric steps are all likely covered by their own warranties. Great. Then there are a bunch of things which are not likely to be covered under their own warranties, but hopefully are covered by your extended warranty and are easily replaced with off-the-shelf components. These are things like LED lights and light switches, your thermostat, water lines and valves, most tank sensors, and even the monitor panel, electrical wiring, as long as it's not multiplex, electrical outlets, USB and DC charging ports, hinges, door stays, latches, locks, faucets, drawer glides, and even your flooring and coach windows can pretty easily be replaced or repaired with off-the-shelf components. And that's good news. Now we come to the stuff that may be more difficult or impossible to replace or repair. These are generally things which were custom built by Roadtrek, Heimer, Corrado, and Sunlight and cannot be found off the shelf. Things like cabinets and doors, countertops, tabletops, cushions, ottomans, mattresses. These are all custom fit for a particular floor plan design. On this CS Adventurous, you can see that the front table is custom made. Same with the SS Agile. Interior trim pieces as well, like your walls and ceiling panels, and all the little pieces that close up gaps so that you're not looking at the naked aluminum walls of the van, are also custom. On most of the Road Trek models, the shower stall is a custom fitted fiberglass enclosure, but not all shower stalls are custom. The Active doesn't have a one piece fiberglass shower stall but all its cabinetry is custom. Also, in most cases, the exterior holding tanks are custom extruded to maximize capacity. And on most road check models, there are custom exterior trim pieces like the lower panels here on the driver and passenger sides of their sprinter based models. On the wide body 210 Popular, the entire rear shell is custom molded to give you extra interior room. 
in all these cases, if you need to replace any of these pieces, you're going to have problems since they are no longer manufactured. You're going to need to look for them on eBay or see if you can find your model at a junkyard and buy the parts and pieces that you need. Or maybe join an online community of owners and pool resources and knowledge. The bottom line is that you're going to have to figure it out all on your own. The electrical system, and in particular Ecotrek, is also a proprietary system, and some components will be difficult or impossible to find. Things like Ecotrek's customized lithium batteries and its battery management system are no longer being manufactured or supported. If you have problems with those parts, you're going to have to join an online forum like Class B forums or a Facebook group like Heimer Active Owners and see if you can get support. My recommendation is to just continue using your Ecotrick system until it starts to fail and then consider replacing the batteries and the battery management system with a trusted third-party system from Volta or Xantrex. Some components in your electrical system are more easily replaced. The second alternator is likely made by Balmer or Nations. The inverter can be replaced off the shelf, as can the converter. The solar panels are also replaceable. So a lot of the Ecotrek system is not proprietary, which is good news. Now my biggest concern is for owners of Mercedes Sprinter products. Those are the SS Agile, CS and RS Adventurous, and the E-Trek. For those products, my understanding is that for several years, beginning in 2017, Roadtrek was not a certified Mercedes master upfitter. That means that Roadtrek was making modifications to the Sprinter which Mercedes did not authorize and subsequently does not need to cover under their chassis warranty. Now, we don't know exactly what those modifications were, but they are likely related to Roadtrek's installation of Volt Start their remote engine start system. Because Mercedes may not have authorized Volt Start, we don't know, it is possible that they could decline warranty work involving your chassis electrical system. But again, we don't know why Roadtrek's Master Upfitter certification was revoked, and that's the real problem. When Roadtrek was in business, it wasn't a problem because their own warranty would cover any warranty work that Mercedes refused to cover. And that was great and reassuring. But now that they're out of business, that guarantee is no longer valid, and you, the owners, are left holding the bag, and for that, I'm sorry. So the lesson here is, if you're buying a Sprinter from a manufacturer, always go to Mercedes Master Upfitter's website and check that your manufacturer is listed. If they are not, be aware that Mercedes can decline any warranty work as a result of unimproved modifications made to their products. I understand this is of no consolation to current owners of Sprinter-based products from Roadtrek, but it is of great consequence for anyone thinking of purchasing a Sprinter-based product from Roadtrek at a steep discount today. All right, that wraps up this week's episode. If you enjoyed it, then give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and ring that little bell to be notified when new episodes drop on my channel. And thanks for watching Ultra Mobility, where you vote for the RV that you want me to review each week. I'll see you next time, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. Oh, ugh. my knee gave out on me. And... And I'm also sick, but the show must go on. <laughs> All right, here we go, testing. Electrical wireling, electrical wireling, 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 which takes 110 shore power, which takes 110 power or short power, which I don't know what I wrote here on the teleprompter.